now we're at Your Horse Live. Super excited because I'm with the lovely Jason Webb, who is um, demoing. You're doing a demonstration yourself today. Yes, three o'clock in the teaching arena. Yeah. I'm not sure what the name of the arena is, but yeah, it's just in, in this arena here. Yeah. So this is the Stable Country Arena. The Stable and Country Arena is where I'll be doing it at three o'clock, and subject matter is speaking. Oh, really? So I have a young horse called JJ, a young dressage horse. He's been out a couple of times, but he hasn't been doing anything like this. So I can imagine he's going to be pretty lit up by the environment. But I've been speaking to people on the stand here, and they've been asking about you know what I do when my horse is a bit you know fired up in competition and that sort of thing. So we'll cover topics like that and what to do if your horse has a bit of a spooks and the different sorts of spooks that you come across. So yeah, I think it should be a good informative demo. How old is JJ? He's four. Oh, so he really is a youngster. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, he's quite young. It's, I've often wondered this, when you're doing a demonstration, is it okay to say to the audience, you know, would you mind just not cheering and keeping it a bit quiet to keep the horse relaxed? Yeah, of course it's okay, but what I'm wanting to do is get him used to different environments. So I don't want the crowd to start jumping up and down on the seats and creating such an atmosphere that JJ goes into this state of flight and then I can't get him back. But what I do want him to do is come into this atmosphere and learn to settle and that it's going to be all right and just follow my lead and, you know, just to get him used to the idea and bring him back down. So you don't want to overface a horse. So if I was competing in an environment like this, it would be just too much. But as it is, I'm just riding around, chatting, and just trying to get into second, explaining what's happening, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I think it'll be, it'll be good. I think it'll be a good experience for him, good learning experience. So what, how have you kind of prepared him for something like um, this? Well, I think people, for my demos, you know, I see a lot of, I mean, Charlotte Dujardin's here, and, Jay Hallam, Jeff Wellington, all these great riders here showing these fantastic horses that are doing, well I'm the other end of the scale, so I'm showing a, a horse that is very green and I think a lot of people have horses like this and have to deal with problems that I come across all the time, so I think it really is, you know, going to hit home for a lot of people about how to deal with these situations. So I've got an I don't, still dealing yeah, with issues of course, like this. It, it does take time, I can tell you. And, I picked JJ because he is a slightly spooky horse, he has a, those big wide eyes that sort of look around all the time. And um, so I think he'll be I think he'll be good for this demo. But in terms of preparation, I have taken him out a few times. So I don't want to bring him to this event and be his first experience because it would be a little bit much. So he has been out a couple of times, but as I say, just local local sort of little shows, a little jumping thing. And that's that's what I've done to get him really. It's lovely for people to be able to see your advice and you know and actually see it firsthand of how you would deal with a situation at a demo, you know, like yeah. your horse life. But also you offer a lot of advice on your website and a lot of tips as well, don't you? Yeah, I do. Um, I've just my my new business, yourhorsemanship.com. It's it's really going well and we've just revamped it again. So it's been going a year and we've we've sort of taken on board some some um, feedback from our client or from, from the subscribers and um, taking on board and we've, we've expanded our search bar on the website so if you've got a problem you just type in the problem and we've got a list of problem specific videos um, chats and things that come up and I'm, I'm really quite excited about it and everyone that's using it is getting quite excited as well so yeah. that's the hardest thing to find is when you've got a problem constantly searching for advice on how do I deal with this. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've all got the standard things like jumping, loading, um, getting on your horse, whatever. But it's the, it's the interesting things like my horse is okay for five days of the week and then one day of the week there'll be an idiot. Yeah, yeah. So, like, what, how do you handle that? Yeah. How do you deal with that? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to sort of understand why these things are happening. Yeah. And um, with the interaction that you get on, on the website, you know, you might, you might ask me that question and I might say, well, okay, that's happening. A lot of the time that specific problem comes about because your horse has been in its comfort zone and then this one day a week, you've been going great. Let's, let's push on or let's go to a new environment. Or let's, and then suddenly your horse has a bit of a moment. And whenever you try and expand, you know, you get those slight anxiety moments. But if you can get through them and have techniques and know how to do it, 
then your horse learns it, it's okay, I'll follow you. And these inconsistent days get less and less and away you go. But the thing is having the confidence to go to or expand what you're doing and come out the other side. And that's what I've tried to put into this program, ideas to keep you thinking positively. This is happening, so I can do this. And you stay in control and manage the situation. Because so. consistency, you basically say consistency is key, but it's really hard when you're working nine to five and, oh. you know, and you're thinking and the, the, you know, it's getting dark earlier, yeah. there's no time to ride, yeah. so now we're going three or four days a week without being able to ride. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I have total empathy for, I mean, I do, I'm every day, all day, so I can I can tell you stuff, but I do I do understand where people are coming from, and if you, if you can't ride all the time, then you just have to accept that, you know, maybe I, I can't, you know, go pushing my horse here, I'll just enjoy my horse and have some nice hugs and do things they're comfortable with, until I can get that sort of continuity, and then there's the old saying, connect before you correct. And it's the same, I think, if you're not riding your horse enough, you don't have that connection. So then if you run into a problem, you're not going to be able to correct it. And so that's a really, something really cool to remember. Connect before you correct. And connecting can be done through being on the ground. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to be riding. No, you can do it on the ground. But if it's riding that you want to connect with, then you've got to think of what you feel like when you're riding. So you're sitting on a horse, horse gets used to that feeling, and that's where the connection needs to be. I often talk about, if you come to a lesson of mine, I talk about how dancing in hold or dancing with a partner is similar to being in a relationship with a horse. You can't talk to them, but it's that feeling of connection between you and being able to move in hold. So, you know, that, you think of that when you're riding or when you're handling a horse, you go far. Does your wife say you're like that? Are you that good with that? We have our moments, shall we say. Everything takes maintenance. <laughs> so, so yeah, everything takes a bit of work. Like you say, you have your good days and your bad days, and you just got to be prepared to manage it, compromise sometimes, think outside the box, but have a plan. You know, and that's what your horsemanship is about. You have those days you think, oh, gosh, I don't know what to do here. My horse has suddenly done this. What do I do? Onto your horsemanship. This is the problem. Yeah, and you may go onto the site and it might not be there on um, your horsemanship. But the idea and the reason I called your horsemanship your horsemanship is because I wanted to evolve around feedback I get from the people that are on it. I have this problem, Jason, and there's no video there. Okay, fine, I'll give you some advice, keep going, and do a video on that. And that's how I want this site to evolve. So it's for you, Brilliant. your horsemanship. Brilliant. Yeah. And the last time we spoke was a year ago now, and almost a year ago to the date, I think. Yeah. So you've had a, a very busy year. What have you been up to? What have you been doing? Well, I've been doing much the same. I mean, I start horses and I've been handling some remedial ones. But this year has been funny. I've had, well, just recently, I get runs of horses and I'm sure they won't mind me staying, but I've started some horses for the best of um, I hope I pronounced that right. Laura Tomlinson um, and some, some great eventers, Emily Baldwin, um, Brian Whittington. So I'm getting lots of competition horses, which I really am enjoying. And uh, they're all such great people. I also um, have done a big batch of polo ponies at the start of the year, so yeah, so I've just, yeah, I've been having a great year, I've got some show jumpers coming in next week, got four of those coming in, so yeah, I'm really enjoying the horse I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of hackers and people that are needing confidence, and I do get a bit of a thrill, especially coming to events like Your Horse Live, where I'm getting clients coming to say, and I haven't seen phrases and I wonder how they're doing, and they come to me and they say, the horse is going great, everything's good, and I'm just like, it just makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, you know? no, so, you're almost like, I don't need you now. Yeah, but yeah. Always <laughs> yeah. I say, well, don't forget your horse, yeah. just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Well, it's been a pleasure to see you, Jason. Thank you so much for coming back onto the Horse Hour podcast, mm -hmm. and we're really looking forward to your demo at 3 o'clock. And uh, we will, you'll find out all the information that you can get on Jason and your horsemanship. You can just head to Twitter at Horse Hour. We're going to be promoting and uh, tweeting loads of photos and um, a little bit of live footage of the demo as well. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks to Horse Hour. Love you guys. Thanks so much. See you soon. Outside the Country and Stable Arena, where Jason Webb, famous Aussie, is actually doing a demonstration behind us. So you'll be able to see how he handles horses that are spooky. If you get a call, pay attention to your horse, one step at a time, maintain your direction.
Right? And when you're facing where you want to go, say, well done, we'll just say, yeah, that's it. Okay, when you get a horse that wants to run from you, then this is what we need to do. Okay, this one, and just wait till I'm sort of in line with you. Don't do it, don't do it in front of you. Just wait till I get a little bit past you. That might see me on the deck if you do that. <laughs> okay, well, right, here we go. Coming down. What? Okay. All right, where you go? And just hold on. Okay, so what I did there wasn't a huge run, but what I did there was turn him back towards uh, whatever it was that stood. I'd say, I said, where are you going? You're running away. Have a look at it. Look. Be curious. I want to encourage that idea to be curious. I don't want him to think, I don't like that. Let's use my whole instinct of flight and run away. I don't want him to use that. So you're going to, if you feel your horse pick up and run, come and look, give yourself a bit of time, and then maybe go back to what I was doing at the start. Just let them bubble out that anxiety. So he feels a bit quick in his walk now, doesn't want to bubble out, and I'll stay in his walk. And I'm just, you can go through a sequence of things to bring your horse out and manage Okay. So that was that. There's one other thing I was going to give you before I went, and I cannot think what it was. It's gone. Okay, but you might see it on my website, your horse picture. Come on, how good a sales is that? Moving me here. Anyway, so there's a bit of something to think about with your spooking. Okay, lots to think about, and most of it revolves around you. Your focus, being able to control your horses and be aware of your horses, body movements. Okay, they are the important things. Then, when you're happy, you can go to what we were talking about before, hold your line and keep a inside bend and work around to the inside bend. Imagine I came in and started trying to do that when he first came in without getting connected, without sort of him starting to realise he might have been really well. But as it is, I've given this horse a really good experience in a hall tree, is all I can describe the place out. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Have a good rest of the day. Stand 534. I recommend before you leave today, just have a look at it. You won't regret it. Okay, thank you.